So somebody who will remain nameless for the rest of this video has curved this wheel on the Ferrari, but they all do need a refurb anyway, so it's just an excuse to get them done. That's what we're going to do on today's episode. The first thing we need to do is remove the wheels from the car. You can normally find the jacking information in your owner's manual or online. Next up you have to wash the wheel fully, including the lug nut area, tyre valves and the rear. Also give the tyre a clean to remove any dressings that might contaminate the paint. You can now have the tyre removed and also the valve if you wish. If your wheels are heavily corroded it might be worth having them acid dipped or media blasted. But if they are badly corroded it might be worth considering having them powder coated. Dry the wheel and tyre with towels and an air blower to make sure that you get all of the water out. If you have centre caps, remove those too. So this is the damage we're working with. It should be an easy fix. We're going to use some masking tape to protect the tyre and then using a file, I'm going to remove the bits of metal that are sticking up. You can also use a Dremel for this bit, but don't grind too far into the wheel. Once that's done, use a sander to flatten the metal so that it's roughly the right shape but flat with the wheel. Mix up some body filler. You don't need special wheel filler, but you might need filler designed for deep cracks if your damage is bad. Make sure to knead the hardener as it does settle and it's quite a common mistake to skip this step. Use masking tape again to protect the tyre and then apply the filler in thin coats. Remove any big lumps before they harden to make life easier. After around 20 minutes you should be able to sand the filler and smooth out the repair. The most important thing you need is a mask, not a cheap one and not a dust mask. These paints are extremely harmful and this is where you have to protect yourself. I'm using a 3M 6002C respirator. I also recommend painting in a very well ventilated area or outside. Once you've finished the repair and blended it into the wheel, it's on to the next stage. I'm going to use a cheap spray gun that I got from Amazon for £15 or $20, which means it generally isn't going to be the best, but for this price, if it lasts for four wheels, then it's pretty much disposable and rattle cans won't give the long lasting, high quality finish that we are after. You'll also need a pressure regulator and an air filter water trap. These are both very important. I used the regulator to set the pressure to just under 2 bar with the trigger pulled and you want to regularly ensure that the water trap is empty. Setting up the gun can be done before you start painting the wheels and it's probably best to do this if you haven't used one before. There are plenty of videos online covering how to do this in detail. The first step is to clean the spray gun as there is probably oils and grease from the manufacturing so we want to clean them off. Just get some gun wash and clean everything thoroughly. On to the primer stage. First, mask everything you don't want to get primer on. 
I'm using a 1K high build etch primer. The 1K means that it's air drying and doesn't need hardener. High build means that it fills small scratches and imperfections. And the etch part is because it has an acid in it, so it eats into the metal of the wheel. This is why you have to wear a mask when spraying this. Use a pre-paint wax remover on all of the wheel to make sure there is nothing that will cause problems. Build up the primer in light coats covering the repaired area. As this primer air dries, check the data sheet for drying times. If in doubt, leave it overnight to harden. Sanding the primer. Using 600 grit sandpaper wet with water, blend the primer repair into the original paint. You want the edges to be feathered to the original paint and the surface to be nice and smooth. Once you've blended the repair, grab a scotch bright pad and scuff the whole wheel so that the paint has a key to stick to. Don't press on too hard, just scuff the surface. We don't need to primer the whole surface as the new paint will stick to the original paint. However, because someone is probably typing a comment about me not priming the whole wheel, here's that process. Make any repairs needed, then scuff the whole wheel. This wheel didn't need any repairs other than removing the runs that are already there from the previous refurb. Prime the whole wheel in the same way as the last step. To get the best finish spray a guide coat of matte black onto the primer. Now sand the primer until you can't see any more black speckles. This is to ensure that you don't miss any areas. Blow the wheel off with an airline to make sure there is no dust or water trapped. Next, the exciting part, paint. You'll need a couple of things, a paint mixing stick with the correct ratio on there, disposable cups and paint filter strainers. Don't use the measurements on the cup, get a mixing stick. The way they work is that you fill up to the first line with your clear coat, then the next line with hardener and using the top bit you can add your reducer. These take a lot of the guesswork out of mixing your paint. Since we're using base coat and two pack clear coat, first we need our base coat which is basically the paint colour. You don't add any hardener to the base coat, only reducer. The amount varies from paint to paint, but also different ambient temperatures. Your paint supplier might be able to guide you on this. Make sure that you stir the paint really well. I'm using Ferrari Argento Nürburgring, which is a body colour, but it's also the factory colour for modern Ferrari wheels. It's a nice paint colour if you're looking for a recommendation for one for your alloy wheels. So now degrease the wheel with panel wipe and then, if you have one, wipe the surface with a tack cloth. Blow any dust off, then start painting. Use long and even strokes and build the colour up. Do a dry coat first and leave it for 10 minutes to cure to ensure that there are no problems with the paint reacting. Don't rush as it will start to cover the primer in around 3 coats. Leave about 10 to 15 minutes in between each coat, dependent on the ambient temperature. Once it's dry, do not sand the base coat. If you make a mistake or get a run in the base coat, you will have to repair it and start again. Once the final coat of paint has been applied, leave the wheel for about 20 minutes. This is the best time to clean the spray gun with gun wash and mix the clear coat. Again, follow the manufacturer's instruction for ratios and start with around 10% reducer. Clear coat is always thinner than base coat, so it's best to put slightly less reducer in there and lower the pressure a little bit. 
Build up two to three coats, the first being a dry coat and then two wet coats. Leave around 10 minutes per coat. I'm actually holding my spray gun too close to the wheel, so you'll see I get two sags in the clear coat. This is fine as we can sand and polish them out when it's cured. You can now start to carefully remove the masking. I like to do this after around 20 minutes when the clear is still soft as it eliminates cracking. Also, make sure you pull away from the painted surface. Now I'm going to show you the painting of the fully primed wheel. It's the same process but I'm including it in case there's anything I missed before. Again, build the base coat up slowly on the spokes and the face of the wheel until the finish is even and there are no patches. There is no need to rush in this stage. Clear coating is the same. I learned from the first wheel to move the gun away from the wheel, but you can see that the process is still the same. Just build up the clear over three to four coats for a nice glossy finish. Polishing involves removing any imperfections, runs or sags in the clear coat. I wet sanded the clear coat with 1500 then 2000 grit sandpaper. After that I use my Vertool DA polisher with Menzerna compound to remove any marks left by the wet sanding. Any parts that you can't get with the DA will need to be done by hand. There is something about new paint that you can't help stroking it. Now it's time to pop the wheel back on. I use my trusty wheel hangers. and also wrap the socket in masking tape to protect the wheels.
tighten and torque the bolts to the recommended settings and then do the same for the front. I then had to clean the dust and compound from the tyre. This was done simply with a brush, all purpose cleaner and a cloth. Now is a good time to replace the centre caps with some brand new ones. Even on the Ferrari they were only about 20 quid each so it's well worth doing. The wheels now look great, there are no more runs and bits that annoyed me before, and most of all, there's no curving. And to say sorry, I also treated her to a new set of carbon fibre air filter covers. I do hope you found this video and the tips in it useful, if you have please give it a thumbs up, tick subscribe to be notified when I upload new videos and if you've got any of your own tips that you want to share please leave them in the comments section below, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.